Welcome to The Future Is, a podcast where we meet the people shaping what's next in business and life. I'm your host, Laura Kelleher, Honeywell's Chief Marketing Officer. In each of these episodes, we will meet the engineers, business leaders, and Honeywell's future shapers as they uncover how today's innovations will make our world safer, smarter, and more sustainable. Today, I'm joined by John Waldron, Honeywell's Chief Commercial Officer, who will share his observations on some of the ways customers and other companies are looking to innovate so they can realize sustainable outcomes. Welcome, John. Good to see you, Laura. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, um, you know, in your role, you have the opportunity to talk to many customers around the globe, customers and firms in general. Um, you know, what, what are you seeing in terms of how they're thinking about sustainability? Mm. Well, it's, it's super interesting times. And, you know, everybody we talk to wants to talk about sustainability. They've all made pledges and commitments. They all have uh, plans for the future. And some of them don't know how to get where they're going. Um, but they all absolutely understand that the world is changing, that the world is warming up, that global warming is real, and that we all have a role to play. And so when they talk to Honeywell, they recognize us as a leader. They recognize us as a company with vast technologies and, and really interesting solutions, uh, but they don't necessarily know what to ask for. And so that's kind of where we typically get started. It's a big challenge, right? What are some of the barriers, aside from not knowing where to start, um, that, that customers are facing as they're trying to meet their goals? Well, it's really interesting. In most conversations I have, uh, most companies Again, they understand that they've made some sort of commitment. We're gonna be net zero by 2035 or 2050, and, they, and they've and they probably understood where they're starting from in a very basic sense. Well, you know, we have these kind of power plants in our, in our near our facilities. We use these kind of cars. We have a carbon footprint as a starting point, but most have not really done a rigorous measurement. Now there's another group that has done some level of measurement, and then their real question is around, well, how do I start to plot the path forward? How do I build a plan for myself to go from where I am to this commitment? And then have stair steps and real projects and plans that are backed up by behavioral change and technology. And so all companies are in somewhat different places on this spectrum, but we typically enter those conversations by just asking them, well, how are you thinking about this? Where are you starting from? How do you measure what you're currently producing by way of carbon footprint and energy usage. And it goes from there. Uh, and most companies usually have this owned in the finance function or in their sustainability office, their ESG leader, uh, their legal function. So you know, sometimes these folks are not particularly close to day-to-day -day operations. So then we have to come at it with customers from both perspectives to both understand how they operate, how they do the work they do, uh, but also then how these goals are connected to, to, their, uh, to their real business. Yeah, yeah, I, it's a huge undertaking, right? There's so many angles to this. Um, so, I mean, Honeywell, we're obviously focused on sustainability, both internally and, um, you know, meeting our goals, but also through the solutions that we offer to customers uh, in the industry. Can you talk a little bit about how Honeywell's uniquely positioned to help customers meet their goals? Sure. And, you, you know, you, you asked about the challenges. Well, the challenges that customers have are really met by what we're capable of doing. They're not sure what technologies exist to solve what problems. And so where we come to those conversations from is really, is really adapting our offerings to their needs. And so we have technologies and solutions today, most of which have been demonstrated for tens of years in industry to you know, help our customers uh, you know, reduce their emissions or reduce their carbon needs or their energy needs in their operation. Uh, and so we're often talking about our technologies and our solutions that have been demonstrated many times, and it opens the customer's eyes to things that are possible. You know, they read about these things in the Wall Street Journal or maybe in some science magazine. What they're not really aware of is they're not aware of specific customers that have put these solutions in practice. And that's typically what we bring to those conversations. Yeah, I mean, making it real. Making right? it real for them, making them understand that these are solutions that are ready now, they're available today, and that we can come and engage their, their, their teams on the ground to talk about how to deploy them. Shifting gears a little bit, um, last year at the end of the year, Honeywell launched the first of a quarterly 
Environmental Sustainability Index. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is um, and maybe some of the key insights coming out of that? Yeah, sure. So the ESI is a new index that we created by surveying over 700 business leaders around the world uh, in various companies, industries, and functions attached to key decision-making around sustainability technologies. And what we were trying to do is really understand the sentiment that's out there around sustainability, how high a priority sustainability is in the companies that people work for, mm. and whether they're backing that with decision-making and ex uh, capital expenditure. Are they really spending money to solve the problem? And so we started by surveying this landscape in late last year. We did it again in Q1, and we're going to continue to do it each quarter going forward. And what that really gives us is an understanding of the trends of the answers that we're getting back. Mm -hmm. And what's been really interesting, just in the first two surveys we've gotten back, is it's very clear that, number one, sustainability is a top priority in the population that we are surveying. Yeah. Uh, it is in the top one or two in nearly everybody we're talking to in this survey. So that's good. So it matters, and companies are putting their budgets to work in investing in this. The second thing, which is really kind of interesting most recently, is that the trend is starting to change from behavioral shift. How, how do you uh, use the lights in the building? You know, how far do you drive to work? Like, that's behavior. Yeah. That used to be what people thought was going to move the needle. Well, people are starting to realize that without technology change, you're really not going to get very far in achieving your sustainability goals. Ultimately, it's going to be both, and everybody kind of realizes that, but there's going to need to be an emphasis on deploying more sustainable technologies around the enterprise. And so this survey is telling us that that realization is starting to change mm. in, uh, in the population that we're talking to. The other thing that's uh, come back in the survey very consistently is the top two priorities of emphasis are really around efficiency. So solutions for making the buildings, the factories, the, the enterprise more efficient in its use of energy. So that's good. And the other is uh, emissions. Emissions is a big area of focus, especially in industrial environments where, uh, you know, whether it's methane emissions or other greenhouse gases, you know, those contribute to the carbon footprint of the companies that we're talking to and, of course, the world at large. And so those companies are really starting to focus on their emissions baseline mm -hmm. and then technologies that can help them lower the emissions that their enterprise is, is generating. And, of course, we have solutions for that. So that's pretty exciting to, to learn from our survey that the problems the world has are a priority. Yeah. That we have the solutions that are top of mind for the problems that they have and that we can go engage them and really make a difference. Yeah, and you know, John, you mentioned that we have technologies to help companies reduce their emissions. We also have technologies that help companies track their, their progress, right? Absolutely, and in fact, one of the big uh, programs that we're in the market with now is our end-to-end -end emissions program, you know, where our, our connected enterprise team and our uh, performance materials team, as well as our buildings team, have innovated uh, with Forge to deliver an emissions ma uh, management and monitoring platform that measures uh, the emissions of the building, the industrial enterprise, and then tracks that emissions baseline. And then when we deploy technology, we can then measure the reduction of the emissions of, of the company that they're a part of. That's pretty important because increasingly companies are having to certify right. for what their claims are. So if they say, well, I'm a net zero company, well, how do you prove that? Well, and because it's net, it's not gross. Net means, well, I probably have some things that produce emissions, and then I've got other things that are green, or I've got offsets that reduce my, my footprint, and the net of it is zero. Um, well, you've got to have a pretty good measurement system around that, and Forge is our solution for that problem. Right. Um, so that's pretty exciting as well, is that we've got the technology, the solution right now to be able to bring that to customers. Yeah, it's so important that we're able to, you know, help our customers be accountable for what they say they're going to do. Absolutely. And they want to be, they want to be accountable. Yeah. I, I, that's the thing that's kind of exciting is it's something that everybody agrees upon is important. Everybody agrees it's good to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of finding the right solutions for the high priority problems and then finding value points that, that customers can get on board with. One of the other things that's highlighted in the index is optimism, right? So can you speak a little bit about are the people that we've surveyed optimistic about their ability to hit these goals? 
Well, I think by and large, the people we're surveying are optimistic about their progress against their goals thus far. They're optimistic about their ability to deliver on their commitments. And they're relatively optimistic that the technology exists to help them achieve their objectives. Uh, we don't really have enough data points yet to say whether that trend's gonna hold and whether as people get closer to those deadlines, that optimism is gonna change. Uh, but as it stands today, people feel pretty positive about their ability to do the things that they've committed to do. Yeah, this is exciting. This is such an important topic and it's very energizing, I think, to realize how committed people are, companies are uh, in delivering to their goals, but also in providing solutions that can enable mm -hmm. uh, you know, firms to get there. there. I think it's particularly important for us as a company. I mean, there are three things that we do for the world. We automate the systems, solutions, and industries that are a part of. We deliver the software technology that help companies you know, transform digitally, mm -hmm. and we deliver sustainability. And this is becoming such an important part of our future that it's just so fun to work on and you can't ignore it. It really applies to everybody we talk to. So I'm gonna ask you the question that, that you know is coming and I ask everyone uh, that we interview here. When you were a kid, what did you wanna be when you grew up? When I grew up as a kid, I really wanted to be an architect. Uh, I, I grew up building things and with erector sets and watching uh, you know, designers on TV and I just, I really love to build and design things. Unfortunately, I was a terrible artist, so that didn't really work out so well. Um, so I became an engineer instead. Um, so it was a bit of a fallback plan, but that's what I dreamt of being. Very nice. Well, still solving problems, right? Well, still solving problems for the world. Building things. Great. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much.